648 now on your Monday morning. Time to talk about you and your pet. Dr. John Falgut joins us this morning to uh, do that very idea. Good morning, John. Hi, Dan. How are you this morning? I'm terrific. How about yourself? I'm excellent. Sounds like you have a lot of uh, patients in the building this morning. There are, there are a few. <laughs> it's a busy, busy time of year with summer and people traveling and several sick ones back there. Do, there are uh, quite a few in the, in the building. All right. I know you have several things probably to talk about. Let me, let me just jump in and ask one real quick. We, we just kind of dodged the bullet here on, on another tropical situation. We don't have to worry about it. But I'm sure when one of these starts happening, you get phone calls, I want to board my pet if kind of thing, don't you? Well, we learned that a long time ago from the, the first hurricane that we went through, uh, and it's uh, real important to make your plans early about getting those pets out of here, because boarding your pet is not an I ideal thing. There's nobody that's going to be able to protect that pet when it's here, when a hurricane comes, the tornado hits. So make plans now to get them on the road with you and evacuate. All right. Let's uh, turn our attention to some other things this morning. What's going on? What, what are the hot topics with you as summer approaches or is here? <laughs> Well, with summer, there's a lot of dogs on it. With, with even things like the evacuations or travel or being out and about, uh, everybody's getting out on the road. One of the things is pet identification because so many pets are lost every year and it's a really big problem. In fact, it, the, the, the numbers are pretty staggering. One in three pets are going to be lost in their lifetime, and that's a quite a few pets. Wow. And so, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's an unbelievable number. And out of those pets, only about 2% of the cats are going to be returned to their owners and only 10 to 15% percent of the dogs are going to be returned and those that are returned usually have some form of identification either a tag uh, they have a microchip or they've got a tattoo on there and there's some pluses and minuses the more safety measures you have in place the better off the better chances you have of getting that pet returned to you and so uh, there, the thing about tags and having those around it's important to have those you can get a quick contact number and a name of the dog however those tags can be lost they can be taken off the dog they'll be they'll be pulled off when they're running loose uh, tattoos don't have a uh, national database and they can also be altered. Microchipping is still far and away the way to go for these pets. All right, so let's talk about what, what does that mean? What, you know, when I hear somebody go, I'm going to microchip, you know, my dog, what, what are we talking about? Well, microchipping, you're looking at, uh, this is my own personal lab here, and uh, one of the things that we're talking about with microchipping is placing a very small chip that's inserted uh, with a syringe and, and a needle. And it's very, it's, it does, it's not painful. It can be done under anesthesia, but generally it doesn't have to be. We offer it that way when we, we're spaying and neutering pets because it's a, it's a quick way to do it. But uh, the microchip sits inside this little needle and it's inserted into the shoulder blades. I've got just a pick. This is a an actual microchip, and you can see the relative size here to my finger. That looks uh, like it's a not flea. This, it, it's a size. It's a but they say it's a grain of rice, and all it is is a barcode, just like you go to the, the grocery store and buy anything, and it's picked up through a scanner, and it has a code with some numbers on it. And what you do is we insert this little microchip into into the dog underneath the skin, and it stays with them for life. And that there's there's not battery powder powered. It's not operated by anything. It's other than just a, being a bar barcode. And so we have if your pet's lost, we have a scanner that looks like this and there's several companies out there and so um, we use one called home again and it's uh, one we've found to be uh, pretty safe and secure because the microchip stays in place where we put it and we know where to scan them and also they have a universal uh, scanner that can pick up different microchips so we'll show you just kind of how that works it's, it's it's as simple as if she were lost and brought in and most of the animals uh, shelters now have these scanners and it's as simple as we just turn it on here and we run it across her back and it picks up, it picks up a number for us. And once we have that number, we can call a national database, and that national database will connect us with, that, with our pet again. And that's extremely important. It's one of the best ways to get your pet back. And, and, and what kind of expense are we talking about for microchipping? 
Yeah, microchipping has uh, gotten fairly inexpensive. You're looking, uh, we charge about $44 for the microchip. That's the insertion of that, of that chip, and that's for life. That's a one-time fee um, to register them with the national database. Now, Home Again uh, has their register uh, that you, you have to call, and it's a monthly, I'm sorry, it's an annual fee of about $18 a year for it. Okay. Uh, there are some companies now that have decided they would go, they would kind of circumvent that, and you can register with them at no charge. So for a nominal fee, you can have your pet uh, microchipped and, and safely brought back to you. All right, something that you can ask your vet about. John, thanks. We'll talk again in a few minutes. Again, John Falgut, uh, local veterinarian, joins us uh, every month to talk about you and your pets. Talking this morning with veterinarian Dr. John Falgut about you and your pet, and we've uh, talked a little bit about microchipping this morning. Uh, John, I was also wondering, are, are mosquitoes a problem with pets? Because, I mean, they've been pretty significant this year. Yeah, they're really significant, and there's some really aggressive mosquitoes out there right now. And we've had one of the worst uh, insect problems that I've seen in a long time with mosquitoes and fleas. But mosquitoes transmit heartworms, and that's the biggest problem that we have with them. Uh, they, they give other diseases, but that's the main one we worry about with our dogs. Cats get heartworms as well, and that, people yeah. need to be aware of that. Uh, so make sure your, your pets are protected with a heartworm preventative because mosquitoes are, as you said, they're very bad right now. Now, I mean, is there such a thing as, as pet repellent? I mean, there's, you know, do you, do you, what do you do about it? Well, most of the, the heartworm preventatives don't work on, on that type of uh, mechanism. It's basically the, the, the medicine that they take will kill the heartworms in the body as they're changing and molting yeah. and it, it gets real technical. But when, what they do is uh, there's very few of them that are repellents. You can use some of the human repellents. You have to be real careful with it with your pets. There is a flea medication that is, you know, it, it touts that it is a, a, a mosquito repellent as well. Huh. And it does work pretty good for that, but it's not 100%. Now, the other problem we always seem to have summertime fleas. Have we seen any improvement in that? Well, we have not seen an improvement in the, the flea population right now, and, and it's getting it's been really bad this year. Again, the, probably the, the biggest flea problem I've seen in, in a long, long time, and a lot of puppies have been suffering from it. Uh, in, any dog that's outside that's not on a, a monthly preventative, they've had issues. They're coming up with products right and left, and so you have to stay current, ask your veterinarian about what the latest, greatest is, because there are some new ones that keep coming down the, the pike, and so uh, make sure if you, of which ones you, products you use, because some are a little bit better than others. The technology improves all the time, and it's almost hard for us to keep up with them as fast as they're coming out. I guess the old idea of uh, flea dips and that kind of thing, that's pretty much gone. Flea dips, flea collars, they're gone. Um, they're still out there because the, because, uh, the, the companies who originally made them uh, still can sell them, but they really should, I, I don't recommend them at all because there's a pesticides, insecticides, and it's, a, it's an outdated technology. Uh, the others that we use don't have the pesticides in them. It's more a med medicinal type product, but they're still available. They're just not effective for lots of reasons. Um, we had so much trouble with them before, and, and if you, you just have it, seen what's available, you need to ask somebody because yeah. there's so many better products available right now. All right. Uh, what else is on your agenda these days at your office? Well, I tell you, there's a, there's a big, uh, big uh, the Rachel Ray competition going on right now. Yeah. This yeah. is with, with the animal services that I would highly recommend anybody thinking about getting a pet right now to get out to animal services and, and adopt their pet. <clears throat> they have through October 31st, and their goal, it's over 400 animals they need to adopt. And I can tell you some of the best pets come through there. I see them all the time. And it's real important to go support your, your animal services right now because it, it's a, uh, they're, they're giving away, I think, up to $100,000, and it'll help our, our community. It'll help our program that uh, supports these, these pets over here if they can win uh, some of that cash, that cash that's out there for them uh, with the Rachel Ray uh, competition. Yeah, and, you and know, so I guess some, if, peop some people have the mistaken idea that if a pet comes from a shelter uh, that there's a problem, and that's not always the case, is it? Not at all. I've found more people pets through the, through the shelter, and they have been some of the best pets you can imagine. First of all, you have, you know, 
I think some people think that they can't get the purebred animals there. Right. there there's right. every breed of animal sitting there. But I'll tell you that those mixed breeds that are sitting there, which now are becoming kind of the, the chic thing to do anyway with the, the yeah. Chewinis and all the combinations they have, but they, they are some of the healthiest pets as well because they have the, the, the genetic, they get the best of the both worlds yeah. with genetics. Right. And all so right. they do really well. John, yeah. thank you for your time as always. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. All right, John uh, Falgood, again, local veterinarian. Check him out, Beaumont Animal West.